Joining us now is political journalist John Fund. John, thank you for your time. Firstly, I want to get your thoughts on this leaked audio of Donald Trump discussing his documents. How do you think this is going to play out for the former president? Well, look, I have no idea if Donald Trump is going to be convicted in any of the indictments that have or might be brought against him. But I think he can be convicted of stupidity with this tape. Um, his current explanation of why he sat down with two writers who are working on his former chief of staff's book and discussed nuclear plans, invading Iran, whatever, is it was bravado. He was really had plans, secret plans to a golf course he was building. He didn't have any classified documents. He was just faking it. Now, I think Donald Trump is perfectly capable of doing that. But seriously, how believable is it? You want to say these are classified documents and instead they're golf course plans? Uh, I think this shows Donald Trump more rattled than we've seen him in a long time. And again, I think there is a double standard in the prosecutions against him, but his defense is going from weak to pathetic. One thing I just don't understand is why he keeps doing interviews about it. Doing that interview with Brett Bayer, he was tying himself up in absolute knots and making things a lot worse for him. You think his lawyers would be sitting there just saying, don't do it. What lawyers? Donald Trump once told a close friend of his when I asked, well, who do you listen to? Whose advice do you take? Is there anyone you can talk that talks to you that you pay attention to? And he says, I only pay attention to myself. Um, I think Donald Trump is, and this is provable, he's a narcissist, and narcissists cannot be reasoned with. So they get sometimes they get into more trouble than they otherwise would, and they appear more guilty than they might than they may actually be. Yeah, look, I think you'd have a few people uh, with you on that one. But what story do you think is getting more traction here, the Hunter Biden revelations or the Trump documents? Oh, it's not even close. Donald Trump is a magnet for cable news television coverage in the United States because ratings go up. Uh, Hunter Biden, the mainstream media is extremely embarrassed privately that in October 2020, just before the last election, they not only ignored the Hunter Biden laptop story, they actively conspired with former uh, uh, Biden and Trump and, and Biden and Obama officials to cover it up. And it turns out that the laptop was real. Uh, there's a lot more that has come out. And you made a reference to Biden's denial that he had ever discussed his business dealings with his son. Well, the White House made a very interesting shift this week. It, they used to say Biden had never, ever discussed his business dealings with his son. This week, a shuttle shift, a written statement saying Biden had never been involved in his son's business dealings. You can see the difference there. I think Democrats are increasingly nervous about this because the whistleblowers coming forward gives this a lot more credibility. These whistleblowers are career government employees. They're not partisan operatives. And I believe the Democrats now have two problems. Biden is increasingly showing signs of age and incoherence and physical frailty. And at the same time, the Hunter Biden story could get a lot bigger as hearings gear up and as more people come forward. And there's even a chance that the plea deal that was cut with Hunter Biden may be challenged or questioned by a federal judge on July 26th when he has to approve it. And that could embarrass the Department of Justice. So I believe Democrats publicly are still completely behind Joe Biden. And privately, every dinner party I hear about in Washington held by Democrats is, what do we do about this guy and how can we ease him out of the picture? I do want to get your thoughts now on some polling. Trump's indictment seems to be working in his favour. According to the latest Fox News national survey, Trump is still by far the leader in the Republican Party's presidential nomination race. John, are you surprised by these polling numbers at all? And do you think we should be putting much stock into them at this point in the race? I think there's a circle the wagon effect here where people are very upset at the way Trump has been treated as opposed to, let's say, how Hillary Clinton was treated. And there is some rally around the Trump syndrome. However, I'd remind you, the average American is spending far less time on the 2024 election than you are or I am and all the other reporters in Washington. That's the truth. Uh, just remember, uh, 
the clear leader of the Republican primary field in 2008 was Rudy Giuliani. He was way ahead. I don't recall Rudy Giuliani being the Republican nominee. The clear leader that same year, 2008, for the Democratic field was Hillary Clinton. Barack Obama was barely an asterisk. Uh, most people didn't pay attention. And Barack Obama eventually became president. So yes, Donald Trump is ahead. He's number one. He has 100% name identification. The other candidates have less. People know about them less than they think about them less. We have to have primaries in Iowa and New Hampshire first. And those will be competitive because the voters there always kick the tires on every candidate that comes through the state. And those were two states that Trump was weaker in than in other states in 2016. So Trump ahead, by no means a confirmed nominee. Absolutely. And we're going to check in in Iowa soon because it is so important in the national political landscape. But uh, we also wanted to get your thoughts on another Joe Biden blunder this week. Have a listen to his latest comments on Russia. It's hard to tell, but he's clearly losing the war in Iraq. He's losing the war at home. Look, what really got me is everyone misspeaks. We all do it. This was the same mistake twice in 24 hours, getting Ukraine mixed up with Iraq. Do you think that people are starting to take note of this? God save the president. I mean, remember <laughs> Joe Biden said God save the queen a couple of weeks ago, and he still hasn't explained what he meant by that. Um, yeah. It is becoming very painful. Now, presidents are very good at covering up their frailties. Franklin Roosevelt covered up his perilous condition in 1944 when he ran for election. Uh, Woodrow Wilson was able to hide behind his wife, who conducted a lot of the affairs of state in 1919 after he suffered a serious stroke. Joe Biden is not as ill as that. But remember, we learned something this week that he, that he wears a CPAP, a mask, and a mechanism to control sleep apnea. That's fine. Lots of Americans have sleep apnea. Good for him. But that wasn't disclosed in his last physical, which was just a few months ago. And the yeah. doctors admitted that he'd had sleep apnea for a long time. So are we being told everything about Joe Biden's health? Also, remember that physical a few months ago gave no mention of any cognitive memory test. It was simply a, a test of his physical abilities. So I think that a lot is being hidden here. And I think Democrats privately fear a lot may come out or something dramatic happens. Remember, Joe Biden fell at the Air Force Academy the other day. Uh, what if the next fall he doesn't get up? What if something breaks? Uh, we certainly hope that he continues in decent health, but the odds are that he is increasingly frail and increasingly incoherent, and people are noticing that more. Yeah, look, and no one takes joy in leader of the free world being any kind of vulnerable, but it's a different prospect when we're talking about someone who's in charge and someone who wants to run again. And I think that's why the conversation's really shifted. But finally, we just wanted to get your thoughts on this interesting investigation by Reuters that's uncovered that former President Donald Trump is the only living president not descended from slave owners. Barack Obama, Joe Biden and George Bush are among those who were descended from men who owned slaves. This comes as far-left Democrats call for $14 trillion in national reparation payments for black Americans as compensation for slavery and discrimination. Like, OK, so this is an interesting study. It, it sounds quirky, but it does raise the question of who actually gets these reparation payments. What, what are your thoughts? No one. It's a stone-cold political loser. And if Democrats continue to press this reparations issue, uh, I think they will uh, alienate a lot of independence. Reuters used to be a serious news organization. It still is in part, but this study is ridiculous. You know, the Bible tells us you do not visit the sins of the father upon the son or daughter. And if you want to go back uh, and look at everyone's ancestors, I can tell you all of us will have something we're not proud of. If you go far enough back in the history of African-Americans, and go back to their ancestors in Africa, you will find some of them related to savage, literally, um, kings and African princes that murdered their people. Should they be held responsible for that? Of course not. It is this, this entire reach 
to go back hundreds of years and pretend that it has anything to do with the people here today, uh, most of whom don't even know their family tree. Many of these congressmen who had their family tree investigated, they knew nothing of what their family had done 500, 400, 300 years ago. This whole thing has become a, a, an exercise in absurdity. It is, it's one of those just kind of stranger than fiction stories when you start pulling at the threads and say, wait, we're actually, we're talking about how much money on this, but uh, we, we could talk in about Australia, this for a lot longer, but we do have to wrap it up. In Australia, if you go far <laughs> enough fun. back in Australia, you'll find some interesting people in people's past as well. Should they be tied to, to somebody? <laughs> well, a couple yeah. hundred years. Yeah, uh, some of our family trees could be a lot longer to get away from <laughs> some, some elements. But uh, no, John Fund, I'm sorry to cut you off, but we do have to wrap it up there. Thank you for your time.